Welcome, friends. Today, we are starting another first impression series. Spectacular. And the house we will be starting our first impressions on this time is Grossmith. Yes, that's right, friends. I have got myself some Grossmith samples. I had to get them from Javois, and I've got seven of them. I believe there are more perfumes, um, but these are the only seven I could get my hands on. So, we will see, shall we? Um, which one shall we start with? I'll be doing four today and three tomorrow, or three the next time I do a, I do a video. So we have Golden Sheep Rare. Oh no. We have Full Nana, spelled with a PH. We have Saffron Rose. Oh, I'm fucking scared, that's gonna be terrible. Diamond Jubilee Bouquet. Hasuno Hana. Amelia. And Betrothal. So. Unfortunately, I don't have Shem El, El Nassim, Nessim, but these are the only ones that Javois had in stock, or the only one, yeah, the only ones they had in stock and available to sample, so they come quite highly recommended. I can't remember who recommended to them. It's not a great sign for the old memory, that, but there we are. So we have one. We have two, three. This is how numbers work. You know, learning with Rich Mitch. And there's four. Yay. So now we have to just pick which samples we are going to try today. And we will try Hasu no Hana. Saffron Rose. Yikes. Golden Sheep Rare. And... Betrothal. Okay. I don't really know what to expect from these, to be honest with you. Um, it is a brand that was out in the, in the mid-1800s. And... Has been revived by their great-grandsons. Or great-grandson, Simon Brook. And his wife, Amanda Brook. So we will see. We will see. It is a British house. And we will start... At the beginning. So Hasu Nohana. It's quite a strange name. This is apparently Ud Earthy. The notes for this perfume, which was perfumed by a fellow Richard is Richard Melchio. And we have bergamot and bitter orange, oak moss, iris, ylang, ylang, tincture of rose, lotus and jasmine, patchouli, tonka bean, vetiver, sandalwood and Virginia cedar. Sounds all good stuff. Let's see what you're like. That is a powdery, powdery number. And uh, there's no kind of, oh yes, there is some kind of blurb. Here we go. Hasu no Hana, the scent of a Japanese lotus lily, was first produced in 1888, so it captures the timeless beauty. Floral composition contains Shepra and Oriental notes, settled on a dry woody base. Notes, bergamot, bitter orange, rose, jasmine, ylang ylang, iris, patchouli, oak moss, vetiver, cedarwood, sandalwood, and tonka bean. It is available in exclusive glass bottles as 10 and 100 ml perfume, as well as 50 and 100 ml EDP. You can also order the fragrance in the original shape bottle from 1919 with embellished gold. I think I'll give that a miss because that sounds extremely expensive. This is a very sheep y kind of composition, very floral, very powdery. 
is a a ladies, a ye olde ladies fragrance. Wouldn't be surprised if there was a little bit of civet in here. Or maybe I'm just pr being prompted into thinking that because of the floral heart. Very good quality. I'll say that. It's not to my taste whatsoever. This is like a dame's perfume, you know? Powdery. Big, powdery, rosy thing. They say there's oak moss in this, but I'm not getting any oak moss. It's certainly not the oak moss that I know. Not getting a lot of the citrus top either, to be honest with you. I do appreciate that this is on paper, but... This is how you test things though, isn't it? You test them on paper first and then you test them on skin if you like them. It's what you do in the shop. It's what I do in the shop anyway. Let us hydrate. Our friends, gather round. So. No. It's almost got this urinal puck kind of thing. You know, urinal cakes. It's almost got that sort of thing. It is actually inducing a bit of a response in my sinuses. Very floral. I'm getting mostly elang and like a powdery iris. With some like round, like woody aspects. Getting a little bit more of the fruit now. Um, strangely that didn't come out at the top even though it's meant to be top notes. It's very grand, you know, it's very good quality, no doubt but it's got this kind of grand, like, dame kind of thing going on. I feel that way about a lot of sheep res, though. A lot more of the wood starting to come out. Just got a blast of the tonka being there as well. Maybe some patchouli. A little bit of earthiness, a little bit of greenness. It's good quality, no doubt. Just not up my alley. I can tell you that right now. Next up, we have Saffron Rose. Now, I'm not going to lie to you, I'm dreading this. A 2012 release. Um, it's going to be a nude rose. It's, yeah, it's a nude rose, isn't it? Uh, Trevor Nickel. I've never heard of you, Trevor Nickel. Sorry about that. Top notes. Uh, rose, Saffron and Cinnamon. Mid notes are oud, tobacco, myrrh, and woody notes. Base notes, castorium, labdan, and gaia wood. Why have gaia wood and oud? It's fucking the same difference. Amber and sandalwood. I am utterly dreading this. This was right smack dab in the middle of the oud craze. So I imagine I already have smelled this about a thousand times. No, I'm not spraying that too much. Let's have a whiff, shall we? Hmm, a little bit different. An authentic and complex oud combining saffron and rose to create a wonderfully rich and opulent scent. This striking composition entices with spicy notes of saffron and cinnamon, supported by beautiful rose. The heart is comprised of exotic myrrh, oud and tobacco, which lend a stunning smoky quality to the fragrance developing into a luxurious base of creamy woods, labdanum, and dark animalic accords. The rose is a different rose. I'll give them that. But it's got that familiar... It's got that familiar... Oud, rose, saffron, 
combo. You know you're in that world. Um, but this is this is it is it is different. Um, it is different. I'll give them that. It's lighter. It's not as fat. It's not as dense. You know, when you get nude rose saffron, sometimes it just like sinks like a stone. You know. Very good quality rose, I'll say that. A little bit soapy as well. It's very light. For an oud rose thing, it's very, very light, you know? Sorry, I think I've just broken the chair. That's better. Fresh. There's a little bit of uh A little bit of darkness there, but not a lot. Little bit of smoke is emerging, but nothing, nothing too outrageous. It's not very animalic. It's getting a little bit powdery. a little bit a little bit of darkness emerging from the oud I'll come back to that um, as I usually do with these excuse me whilst I hydrate um, I'm just going to wait a minute or so while that kind of unwedges itself from my uh, from my nostrils It's a good fragrance, that, actually. I was dreading that, and it was not as bad as I first feared. At all. So, bonus points for that. Um, next up, we have another Sheepra. And it is again perfumed by Trevor Nickel. Well, bless you, Trevor. I have never heard of you before today that I'm aware of. Um... Let's see what you say about this. A bright and contemporary interpretation of the classic Sheepra. Golden Sheepra conjures up images of autumn sunlight shimmering on golden leaves. Spicy notes of cardamom and nutmeg are blended into the opening. Bright citrus accord. Rose, geranium and heliotrope oh, provide a beautiful balance to the vibrancy of the opening, whilst patchouli introduces a warm, earthy quality. Dry, smoky vetiver leads seamlessly into a sensual base of woods. Which ones? Amber? And musk. I don't like the whole generic woody notes thing. It's fucking it's not good enough. <coughs> Tell me which woods. Okay. So, golden sheep. Bah. Let's see what you have to say. Very juicy, very orange at the beginning there. Wow, like orange juice. Light floral. Summery. A little bit spicy, just a little bit though. Like orange and lemonade. Orangeade? Orange and lemonade, you know? Imagine a little mixture of the two. Like you've put some orange squash 
into a glass and then filled it with lemonade. This is very fetching, it's very nice. A little bit feminine for me actually. Um, and it was marketed towards women. I'm not sure if all of these are marketed towards women to be fair. But I mean, if I find one I like, I mean, it wouldn't stop us. Juicy, juicy, rindy. It's got that rind going on. Oh, excuse me whilst I hydrate. Again, some of the geranium. A little bit of greenness too. It's got the hook at the top, you know? That juiciness at the top is very fetching. Um, heliotrope's coming through a little bit. Certainly feels that way. Geranium. Spice nutmeg. Did I read the notes? I'm not sure I did. I'll read them. Oh, yes, I did. Because I wasn't impressed with woody notes. Yes. That's a cop out, in my opinion. It's turned out a little bit plain for me, that. It's nice. It's good quality. All of these are good quality. They're well made. They've got decent ingredients. Um, they're not just like everything else you've ever smelled. They don't seem to be falling apart at all. But there's nothing there that's grabbed us and said, love me, you know. Next up, next up, and last up, we will try betrothal. Ooh. Okay, this was released in 2011. The original betrothal perfume was made by the Grossmith Perfumery for Princess May on the occasion of her wedding to King George V. Then the princess became the newly crowned Queen Mary, who happens to be Prince William's great-great-grandmother. And those ripples of history resonate in Betrothal's beautiful revival in time for today's fairy tale wedding, royal wedding of William and Kate. And so to the perfume itself. Betrothal is a floral bouquet with a citrus opening which blooms quickly into the heart of Rose de Mai and Jasmine. Incidentally, this precious ingredient can only be called Rose de Mai if it is specifically grown in the tiny town of Grasse, France, the very heart of perfumery itself. Very few perfume houses source their ingredients from here now, as they are so incredibly expensive to produce. There is a wonderfully luxurious powdery note from the heliotrope mixed with ylang ylang and neroli, clean and lingering, which reminds me of dusting one, which reminds one of dusting powders applied with swans down feather puffs, with handles entwined in satin. I'm so bollocks. If it's all. It's not all virginal white sweetness and light, however, though delicate. This, there isn't some there isn't some trembling, fragile bouquet of blossoms soon spoiled. There's a definite hint of minxy naughtiness once that billowing veil has been lifted. A suggestion of the final seduction to come. Review by Susie Nightingale. Ah, you need bother, whatever. Um, I'm not going to like this. I can tell. Citrus is at the top. Which ones? Heliotrope, Ylang Ylang, Rose, African Orange Flower, and Jasmine in the middle. Civetta, 
that, 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 and vanilla in the bottom. So I'm assuming that. Oh, you fucking slags. Oh, there we are. The, uh, the, um, spray I wasn't working for a second there. Promptly shat myself. Let's see what we have here. Mmm, classy. I'll give it that. No hint of minx yet. Floral. We've got a little bit of the citrus, as nondescript citrus. Very heliotrope, very lang lang, very citrus. Fresh, a slightly plasticky kind of vibe to it. Maybe some geranium, kind of minty uplift. Could be the heliotrope, that. Could be the ylang ylang, actually, mixing with the citrus. Giving this kind of creamy sort of vibe to it. It's very vanillic. Um, it's very good quality again. Citrusy, floral, a little bit vanillic, powdery kind of thing from the Elang. It's very good. Like very good quality you'd be with like, like a woman in her 40s, you know, a classy woman. It's not a young, not a young person's fragrance. Excuse me whilst I hydrate. Got this kind of classic women's fragrance vibe about it. You know? Like 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 old old like old old classic women's fragrances from like the 50s and the 20s, you know? Very floral, not for me. Not for me. Um it would appear that I have picked all of the most feminine ones. I imagine all of these are feminine fragrances now, but I will continue on and see what I think. Tongue's gone a little bit numb from sniffing those so ardently. Anyway, let us go back over the four then, shall we, before we exit. Hasu no Hana. Oh, that's become a lot more woody. Yeah, I can see that now. It's a lot more mossy, woody, green. I can see where they're getting the oak moss from now, yes. But it's still got that kind of powdery, like, feminine aspect. Yellow floral kind of thing, you know? Irisy, powdery. Imagine like like rose de is quite powdery anyway, but when you mix it with ylang ylang and iris, you can just imagine it's just like a big boosh of iris of um, powder. Excuse me. Interesting. Very floral. Very high quality. It smells. 
you know it smells really good quality um very classical next up we have saffron rose this is one up this is the one surprisingly that i've actually liked the most by a considerable distance um it's dark it's not suited for this this weather whatsoever but it is very nice it's ambery spicy dark it's not it doesn't feel derivative strangely enough in a crowded field it feels like it sort of i don't want to say exciting because it's not exciting but it's it's good and it's well made and it smells like a perfume because a lot of times in the west these things don't remind you of perfume um I don't, I doubt there's any great amount of real oud in here. It's very, very well made. If you want an oud rose that is not, is not just like a direct rip off of something you've already smelled. You could try that. I'm going to try that on skin. That's really nice. I do like that. Next up we have Golden Sheep. Bah. That's become really nice as well. That's really pleasant. I'd like to smell that on a woman. Absolutely I would. That's really, really nice. I'm going to take that to my friend's house and let her smell that. That is really nice. It, it's, doesn't, it's, not, it's not cliche, strangely while being classical you know very citrusy without being overly sweet or like something you've smelled already i really like that i will try that on someone else's skin <laughs> And then last but not least is the old betrothal. Let's see what you've got to say for yourself. Hmm, a bit fresher, it's like a brighter vanilla, you know? A little bit soapy, in fact, considerably soapy. Wow. Minty, I'm getting some kind of minty vibe from it. How's that happening? Hmm, maybe more of a soapy vibe than a minty vibe. It's not like the Cologne Aficionale. Like, this is like a proper, like, unrepentant soap, you know? What I am smelling now is... Like, that's, like, Cologne Royale smells as though you're sniffing the bar of soap. This smells like you're sniffing skin that's been freshly washed with, like, soap. It's a little bit more sort of standoffish. Very nice. These are really good quality. I wish there were more men's offerings, I must admit. Uh, maybe the next, maybe in the next three. I mean, one of them's called Amelia. So I can't imagine that being a fucking men's fragrance. And then another one is called Full Nana. Are you Full Nana? And then the other one's Diamond Jubilee Bouquet. I don't have any of the other ones. These were the only ones available at the time. But there we are. And that is my first first impressions video of the day of the day of the house of growsmith thank you very much for watching everyone i will see you all again soon bye